Hello everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by Sewing Machine Rehab today. We are continuing on with our Singer 301A restoration series. And today we will reinstall all of the bobbin winding parts. So what that means is we will install the bobbin winder stop, the bobbin winder tension bracket, which I took fully apart. You might have left some of it together, and if you did, that's fine, but I'll show you how to put it back together if you took it all apart. And then the actual bobbin winder itself, and this is called the bobbin winder frame, and then all the parts that go with it. So one thing I wanna talk about before I start is this little washer right here. I was looking through my parts list for the Singer 301, and you know, this little washer that I took off isn't listed in the parts list. I did look at the other 301 that I have that I'm working on right now. It doesn't have this washer. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. And I do have another 301 in storage right now that I haven't started yet. I did not go check and see if it had this part. And I honestly can't recall if other machines have had it. So if you don't have this washer, I wouldn't sweat it. It's not even on the parts list. And if you do, I will show you where it went. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it and put this part back on where it came off and just check the function and see does the bobbin winder frame move up and down like it's supposed to or not. And if I'm not satisfied with how it works, then I will try removing this part, but not really sure why it's not on the parts list uh, and not really sure why some machines would have it and others don't. But as we noticed when we were putting the feed regulator back together, some of them had a spring and some of them didn't. So there you go. So quickly, just look over your parts. You want to check the oil port on the bobbin winder frame, and that's this little hole right here. Make sure you cleaned it out really well, and then you can add a little bit of oil. And it's tempting to put a drop or two into this hole, but honestly, it doesn't take that much. And if you put a drop or more than a drop, you'll notice it bleeding out the ends. So I like to apply that oil with just a little paintbrush and then I might spin it around a little bit and add a little bit more. And that's typically all I do and it's enough. So I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let's put this bobbin winder tension bracket back together. And that is this piece right here. So you're going to take this bracket and it's going to, it has sort of an L shape and that bottom of the L is going to face the back of the machine. And you'll notice there's this little nub on the bottom that's designed to fit into this little slot right here. Okay, this little slot right here this little nub fits into that slot and it's adjustable. And that is because you want to have your bobbin fill evenly. And sometimes if it's not, if it's filling more to the right side or the left side, all you do is loosen the screw that goes here and move this right and left to get it to fill evenly. So when I first put it on, I sort of make sure it's just centered. You're going to use the bigger screw for the tension bracket, not this little one. This goes in with the disc and spring. So you're going to use this bigger screw here and just get the appropriate screwdriver. And I do go ahead and just oil up the threads on this screw. 
and then just screw it in to the hole. Maybe I'll try to start it with my fingers. There we go. You don't have to tighten it down all the way. I, I like to center it at first. And then when I'm testing the machine and I wind my, my first bobbin, that's when I'll see if I need to actually adjust this right or left. But go ahead and tighten that down. And then you're going to assemble this little uh, tension disc back together. And it kind of feels a little counterintuitive, but the way that it goes, oh, and oil, oil your spring up a little bit. So the way that it goes is you have this little disc and the spring goes inside. So it's a little cup and the spring just sets down inside the little cup. Then you take this little washer and do you see how it is shaped? So it, it, it's also like a little cup. You're going to put the cupped side down against the spring. So it looks like that. Okay, and then your last little screw for this part, I just push it in the hole. And then I can screw it right onto the bracket. I changed the angle just a little bit so you could see better. So I have the pieces all together, first the spring, then the little washer, then the screw and I just want to get it onto the bracket itself. And you can start it with your finger if you want, but this is a little bit more stable than trying to assemble this piece before you put the whole bracket right back on the machine. So you can do it however you'd like, but this is kind of what works for me. You just want to snug it up. Now, once you have that on, take your fingers and just kind of pull on that cupped part. It should kind of spring away from this bracket here. And then when you let go, it should spring back. That's helping put some tension on your thread when you're winding the bobbins so it's wound nice and tight. Not too tight, but it's not too loose either. So it should definitely be springy when you're done. After that, we'll put the bobbin winder stop on and that's just these two little parts right here. And so the bobbin winder stop is another adjustable part of your machine. And this adjusts to help you control how full your bobbin actually feeds. So I'm going to move the camera so we can see what I'm talking about. The bobbin winder stop fits here. Do you see this little screw hole right here? This little piece fits in here, but you'll notice that there's this little oblong opening that the screw goes inside. That's because I can either have it set really high, so I'm winding my bobbin really full, or I can move it down and tighten the screw, and that automatically stops my bobbin before it's completely full. And that's just a preference for you. You know how big your project's gonna be, and maybe you just want that bobbin to stop at a certain point, so you're not winding too much of a certain thread color onto your machine, that's what the whole idea is behind this. So I'm going to take my little screw and if I can start it with my fingers. And when I'm first just reinstalling this, just because I like neat and orderly kind of things, I just kind of line up the top of the stop with this little ridge right here. And that's where I tighten down the screw. 
but there's really no right or wrong as far as this goes. It's just your preference. So now we have put the bobbin winder tension bracket back on and we have added the bobbin winder stop. So the next part is the bobbin winder itself. So the last part for the bobbin winding system is the bobbin winder frame with pulley and spindle. That's what this piece is called. And we put a little oil here in this hole. If you forget to do this, you can always do it after it's on the machine. It's not really a big deal. But you should have your bobbin winder frame hinge screw that's going to go inside this hole. So the end of the screw will be pointing out just like this part here that the actual bobbin goes on. That's how it goes in. And I do oil this part just a little bit because this is gonna be rotating around. I wanna make sure that I give it a little coat of oil and then I just slide it into the bobbin winder frame. The next part that goes on is called the bobbin winder frame washer. And it's not a typical washer like this other interesting looking washer that I have here as far as no part number and it's not in the parts list for Singer. But it's actually the one that has that little tab that sticks out. And you want to also point that tab in the same direction as this part here where your actual bobbin goes on. So it goes on next with that little tab pointing, eventually it'll be pointing towards the machine itself. Last is the spring and you put that on last. So I was trying to figure out how this washer really worked and the, all I can figure is that it was right here uh, between the bobbin winder frame and the body of the machine. I truly do not see a reason why there should be a washer here and I'm thinking just right now I'm not going to install this part back on. If you had this part on your machine let me know in the comments. I'd be curious to know if anybody else found this part or if somebody had added this after the fact. Maybe they didn't like uh, how hard it was to, or easy it was to move the frame up and down, but I'm gonna leave it off and we'll see how it works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this screw and it's going to screw into this hole. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna pay attention to this little tab that's sticking out because that little tab is going to finally come to rest in this little hole right here. So I just wanna make sure I do have enough oil on the end of this screw. Just oiling it up. And then I'm just going to slide all the parts on and I'm watching that little tab. Do you see it there? I wanna make sure that that little tab as I tighten down that screw is going to rest in that hole. So just take my screwdriver and I will start, oops, sorry about that. I will start tightening it up and that tab I can adjust as I start to tighten up the screw. For me, sometimes I do this while I'm standing in front of the machine because I can keep an eye on that tab a little bit better. So I'm gonna see if I can angle this just so you can still see. And I'm checking my tab. This is still loose enough. The tab hasn't come to rest inside that hole yet. Just 
just tightening it up. Stop and check my tab. It's in the hole where it goes. I think I'm good to go ahead and just keep tightening this now. Okay, it's all the way, it feels like as far as it will go. Check it one time. All right. Okay, so I can move this up and down, no problem. And I don't feel like it's too hard or too easy to turn up and down. I'm moving this and I'm not seeing the screw head turn, so I know it's in there really secure. So I'm comfortable leaving this part out. So that's it, that's it for the bobbin parts or the bobbin winding parts. So you do have the tire that goes on this and it's just a little rubber tire and it's up to you if you leave, leave it off for now or if you just pop it on this is the tire that runs up against the hand wheel that actually spins the bobbin winder for you and winds the bobbin. Uh, if you're going to polish your machine one more time or put a little bit of wax or whatever, maybe you want to wait. But once you're done with the whole cleaning process, there's really it doesn't matter if you put this on now or later. It's not going to make a difference. So I pop it on just so I don't lose it. But anyway, that's how you do it. That's how you install the bobbin winder frame, the bobbin winding stop, and the bobbin winder tension bracket back onto your Singer 301. So now that we have done that, when we come back, we can go ahead and reinstall the hand wheel, which will not take any time at all, but I will show you how to grease that up as well so anyway i hope this helped you out today i appreciate you watching and please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already that way you'll know when the next video is out and i hope you have a great day bye